Hey everyone, it's Lisa from Primitive Gatherings, and today I am here with my grandson, Jace. Say hi. Hi. All right, so we are super excited today because we are gonna show you how to make a Pokemon quilt. Now this quilt I made for Jace for Christmas, right? Mm -hmm. Were you excited when you got it? Yes. What did you do? You, I think you squealed, right? Yes. <laughs> Why? Why? Why would you squeal? Because I loved it so much. You loved it so much? Okay. What? Why did you like it so much? Um, because it had all the different Pokemons and all my favorites. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And who made it for you? Um. My grandma. <laughs> Your grandma? Oh, okay. Yes, I did make this for you. I did kind of give you a peek at the panel, right, before you got it. So you knew that there was a panel and I was going to make you a quilt, right? I wanted yeah. to make sure you still like those Pokemon before I made you a quilt. Well, yeah. Yeah. But I know that people, uh, doesn't matter what age you are, because my 30-year-old son collects them. Your Uncle Luke still collects Pokemon cards, doesn't he? Mm-hmm. All right. So I'm sure that... Doesn't matter what age you are, you're still gonna love this quilt, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so we are gonna share how to do the quilt with you all, starting from prepping all the way to stitching and then with you guys showing how much you love it, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's get started. So what you're gonna need for the quilt is the pattern. So this is the I Spy Pokemon quilt, right? Mm -hmm. All right, now here is the panel. And one of the things I suggest you do if you get this is take a picture of the panel because uh, when I was putting this together, I had a hard time trying to figure out what was right side up for some of these guys because they're not all creatures. There's, what are these things called? Uh, there's like, ener there's energies and like, so like there's basically like this is water energy strengths. Um. Yeah, and Mimi's and Grandma's and Nana's that we don't know what which way this goes. So I had to go back and look at another panel so I knew what was the right orientation to put it in the quilt. So mm -hmm. that's kind of a, a good idea to take a picture of the panel. Mm -hmm. So here is the panel full out, and we have these all ready to go for you. And there are 168 characters on here, right? Mm -hmm. All right, cool. So that's the panel that this whole quilt is based on. And then we need a background fabric. So we chose this Bella here, a nice gray, and that sets off the colorful blocks. And then I used these pre-cut charms here from Primitive Gatherings, and they're all ready to go. We need two squares for each block. So that's why we have all of this, and it's all nice and pre-cut for you already. If you don't want to use pre-cut squares, you will need what I call a fat 16th, which is four and a half by 22, and that you need 84 sets of that to make up for these here but we have these for your convenience if you want to go that route and that's basically all we need to make the quilt so on to the next step which is prepping your fabric all right we're ready to starch our fabric that's the first step that we're going to do to get ready for the quilt now when we have yarded your five yards of gray, you can cut sev that into several sections because it's just a little bit hard to do all five yards of it at one time. But um, there's no borders on this or anything. So just cut a couple hunks off and there's plenty of fabric. So you're, you're good. So do you want to see how, should we show them how we do this? All right, so as you get a little, you can do these, all right? And I'll show them how to do the big piece. So I've taken the fabric and laid it out with a fabric here on my ironing board. I have a towel down to protect from the starch. And now we're ready to start, right? Yeah. Okay, so this is what I do here. I just take it and do like a perimeter. And I want this to be really, really wet. Not just, we're not just going like that. All right, we're gonna get it really wet because we want it to shrink all at one time instead of while we're piecing our blocks. 
So this is kind of how I do it. So we basically don't want to like um, make it like dry so fast. Right, yeah, we want it really wet. So you're going to see how wet it gets when I'm done here in a minute. Now this takes a little time, but it's really, really, really worth it. All right. So once you get one section done, like that, mm -hmm. see how wet that is? We're gonna take the next section and we're just gonna kind of roll it up on itself like that and then you keep bringing it back. So pretend this is like a two yard piece and you just keep laying it on itself. And I wanna show you another little hint or tip that if this hurts your hands, you can always put this little thing on like this and then you use it so you're using this instead of your fingers. So see how we do that? Mm -hmm. You're gonna wanna do this to the panel as well. And then next up we're gonna show you how to do the colored solids. All right, switching hands. I can't wait till you're a little bit bigger and your hand can do this for me, right? Mm -hmm. That could be like a little part-time job for you. So you can buy more Pokemon cards, right? Or do you have them all no, already? I'm just gonna buy them for my whole life. You're, gonna, you're for your whole life? Yeah. Okay. All right, so. And then once I'm too old, I'm just gonna put them in my attic. In your attic for your kids? Yeah. Yeah. You're gonna have some kids, right? So I can be a great grandma? Yeah. All right. Okay, now, once we got it all wet, this is where we hang it on the drying rack. Yeah. So we're just going to pick it up like this and we're going to lay it on the drying rack like that and we're just going to let it dry. Next up, we are going to do our squares. All right, so lay them all out. Let's put the ones that match by each other. Okay. So I'll be matching my blues. Oh, there you go. It's just like that one game, that memory game, all right? Yeah. All right. So you want to do that? Yeah. Oh, good job. Look, you can already do it. So I have two sets here that are already pre-start. So you see how nice and stiff they are? That's what we want. So once everything is starched, we're going to place them on the drying rack. We're going to let them dry naturally. Once they're dry, then we iron them with steam, and then they're ready to be cut. Boy, you're pretty good at that. I know. Yeah? Make sure you get all the edges. Okay, now take these and put them on our drying rack. I'll get the one little spot there you missed. Usually I'll just keep stacking, stacking, stacking all these and then all this starch will soak into all the fabric. So I would just keep laying that whole pack upon itself. Good job. All right, so now we're going to go over to cutting, and this is already a starched piece of gray, and then two squares there. We're going to make two squares, one with gray and one with color on the outside. The quilt is made up of two opposing blocks, one with gray on the outside and color on the inside, and then the second one is color on the outside and gray on the inside. All right, let's go to cutting next. All right, the first thing we're gonna cut out is the squares out of the panel. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna cut long rows. So I'm just gonna take a small ruler, not a big one, and I'm just gonna lay it on here, and I'm going to split the difference of the blue here. So I'm gonna put an eighth of an inch right on that square, and I'm just gonna keep following that eighth of an inch away from the white 
and keep doing this all the way up through the panel like that. And then once you have that, I'm just going to cut one here. Get it out of the way. Then you're going to come in and you're going to cut an eighth inch away again and cut each one of them apart. Now in the pattern, it tells you to cut these centers three inches. Some of them though are going to measure two and seven eighths and that's perfectly fine because we're doing a square and a square and it will all work out. Everything is oversized and is going to be trimmed. And some of these are so close to the edge that you got to kind of be careful that you don't sew off some of their uh, characters parts but yeah. sometimes it's unavoidable so don't worry if you do sew a, sew a little bit right mm -hmm. yeah the quilt will still look fabulous yes it will <laughs> okay so continue to cut out all of your characters and line them all up in a nice little stack and then they'll be ready to go when we're ready to stitch the blocks together mm -hmm. all right on to the colors so we'll get this out of the way and then the next up is the colored square. So here are the two sets that I need, one for a gray block and one for a colored block. Now, in the directions, it tells you to cut for each block four and a half and four. So what we're gonna do with this is these are five inches starch. Now, because we're trimming anyways, I could, I could trim these down to four, one to four and one to four and a half, like so, if you want to be really perfect, but guess what? You don't really have to. If you had yardage, definitely do that, but because we are working with five inch squares on this one, you could actually just leave this little bit on. But if you're using the yardage, like I said earlier, if you're cutting a four and a half by 22 and you have 84 of those, then you're gonna wanna cut half of them into, half of them into four and half of them into four and a half. All right, now this set, that one was four and a half. I'm gonna cut this one to four or guess what? Let's just leave it whole and I'll show you how this works as well. So we're just gonna cut that one corner to corner and now these are ready to go. We'll put those up there. And now we have our gray. And all of this will be in your download. Okay. And if we had a bigger ruler here, we would use our bigger ruler, but I'm not gonna waste the time doing that. So I'm gonna cut a four and a half inch strip and then I'm going to cut a four inch strip. Half of your grays will be four, half will be four and a half. And like I said, everything is very big and oversized, so we will be good. So then you will cut this the other way into four inch squares, like so, and you probably could get one out of there too. And then everything gets cut on the diagonal. So here's my fours, and these are going to go on that pile, and then this is my four and a halves. Trim away the salvage. My ruler is five inches, so I know to put this right on the half inch there. Four and a half. Four and a half. My ruler is six inches. All right, now we have to cut these on the diagonal as well. And like I said, the pattern gives you the right amount to cut on everything. All right, but for the two blocks that we're gonna sew today, I need that and then four of these. And which ones do you wanna sew here? Uh, I'll sew this one. All right, which one you want, him with the pink or the yellow? That's the biggest decisions you have to make in this quilt. Just set it on that pile if you want to go there. Okay, okay. now which one you want to do on this pile? Mm. There you go. All right, we're ready to go to the sewing machine and stitch our two blocks. All right, it's time to sew our blocks together. So I've laid out two sets of the blocks. One has the color in the center and the gray on the outside. The second one has the gray on the inside, the color on the outside. And according to the pattern, these are the four inches, these are the four and a halves 
four inches, four and a half, or five cut in half. Like I said, we're gonna trim everything, so don't waste a step if you don't need to. So these are using the charm, the five inch charms, of course. All right, so now I'm going to take one of the panels, or the little characters, right? Mm -hmm. And we're just going to kind of eyeball this, and yes, this is super big, I know. <laughs> but uh, it, it works just fine. Well. It will turn out well, yep. So we might as well sew both of them at the same time because this is called chain piecing and we would just run sets. I would suggest stitching these all in sets of maybe 20 of them or whatever number you want to stitch. All right, so when we have that one done, we have to go to the other side and put the other one on. And I don't stop and press that one yet. I press them when they're both together. And you should not see any of these blue borders on here. That should be in your quarter inch seam amount. So see how I'm lining that up in the mm -hmm. center? Yes. Yeah, so your Mimi did this 168 times, multiple, multiple, multiple wow, times. Wow. Lots of time and love went in your quilt. All right, so once you have... It's pretty hard to do it 168 times. Well, I wouldn't say it's hard, it's just time consuming. Yeah. So now... Be for the video here, I'm just using this little personal iron, but I would probably take all 20 of my blocks that I have stitched this way to the ironing board at one time. And I'm just pressing the triangle away from the center block. All right, so now you can trim that if you want, but I don't. I just lay the next one on and run that through. Do you think you'd ever make a quilt someday? Mm, yeah. Yeah? Your daddy has and your papa has. Just kind of finger press that away for now. Oh, now you can see the Pokemon. Oh, now you can see it, yes. Because once you covered up their like faces, I saw um, you doing something wrong and I was like, Oh no. I don't know what's happening. Right, we're showing everybody else how to make it, so I gotta show I gotta do it right. Do you know what happens if you do something wrong? Then everybody else does it wrong. <laughs> yeah, if I don't stop them in time, but there's this tool and it's called a seam ripper where you can rip out the seams right here. It's called the oh, froggy yeah, stitch. So yeah. this will help you rip it out if you accidentally sew something wrong. Mm -hmm. So that's a good that's a good question there that you had. Mm -hmm. All right, last one on here, center it, run it through. Run my little leader through there. So you like to help me in my sewing room sometimes, yes. don't you? What do yeah. you do for me? Sort your pins <laughs> and a lot, a lot of stuff. Yeah, right? I'll be like, hey, Jace, can you help me? And you're like, sure, Mimi. All right, so I'm just going to flatten those out like that. The other one as well. Oh, then you can see the little, like, square, like the little diamond square. Yeah, there. so look at that. Then they're perfect, right? Uh -huh. So now the directions say to trim. Now yeah. we have to trim. Because you need to make that um, other square. Yeah, we have to put the other round on it, but we have to yeah. make sure this is the right size. Yeah. So it says to trim to four and a half. So on my ruler, I'm gonna find two and a quarter, and I'm gonna put that directly on the diagonal. So corner to corner, two and a quarter. Trim, rotate around, go to four and a half now. Trim, 
the first one you have to line up. The second one you just go to four and a half. So two and a quarter, two and a quarter, trim. Now some of you are not going to like the fact that I didn't trim those. You can do it however you want. <laughs> but that, I mean, it's a lot there, but when you trim it, there's really not a lot left on there. So I just like to save steps because I want to get my projects done faster so I can go on to the next one. No, so you can give it to me faster. Yeah, so you could get it faster too, right? So now four and a half here, trim, two and a quarter, lining up corner to corner again. All right, one last cut, and now we're ready for round two on each one. So the gray gets the magenta, and the color gets the gray. So now you're gonna repeat these blocks until you have 84 of the gray on the outside and 84 of the different colors on the outside. So now we just continue on with the same step, kind of lining that up here in the middle. And that's when I thought you were actually messing up. Yeah. It didn't look like, but you actually like kind of fold it. Yeah, we fold it back. So when you stitch, you always sew right sides together mm -hmm. and then when you press, you press it open mm -hmm. so the good side is up. Now I would not alternate between these two. I would do all the colors and then all the grays. But on video, we kind of show you both ways to do it mm -hmm. without holding you here too long. All right, one side Reason on. If it's not good that way, you can always do it the other way. Right. You can do them one at a time. You can do one side on a bunch of them. See, I don't have to press this one out of the way because it's not in the way of my seam allowance there. So one step less there, too. All right, now we have to press here. Press it away. it away. I can turn it over to make sure I got it that way too. And this one, this one I'm going to press in because they'll alternate that way when we're putting them together into the quilt. Press in here. I didn't do that one right. I wanted it to go in. Did it go in? Yep. All right. Okay. So the grays I pressed in and the colors I pressed out. Line that one up. When you line these up too, you can kind of judge how much you have hanging over on each side too. That helps too. Or you could take the time and pinch the centers and then line it up, but again, it takes a lot more time. There's one. Last one here. And I forgot to mention that I'm using a gray thread. It is number... 2605, and that matches nicely with the gray. I was going to remind you about that. You were. But then 
I thought you already told them. Oh, no, I didn't tell them yet. But we will put it in the description below so they know, and then they can order that exact color if they need to. If they don't have it. If they don't already have it, yep. All right, so this one is away. And then this one is into it. And I don't really know if you really have to do this, but if you, I think because these blocks float, it'll be fine if you do press everything out that way. All right, so now it's time to trim up to six and a half. Because now you have the whole square. Now we have the whole square. And now we just have to trim it and then they're ready to sew together once uh -huh. we have all of them together. So I have a six and a half by 12 and a half inch ruler. So I'm just going to put that on the center line from here to here and then trim. Now I got to move up here. And on this one, I could trim on both sides if I was standing, but I'm not standing, so. Well, I am. You are. So see how we have a little bit of float there? Do you need this? Yep, I don't need that, honey. Okay. You can put it under my foot, my sewing machine foot. Oh, yeah. I just put it in the garbage. All right, there's one to six and a half, and now the other one. What do you think? Two completed blocks, just like that. But you have to do... How many oh. more? A lot, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, so we need 84 of this kind and 84 of that kind, and then that makes 168 total. Mm -hmm. So every one of your Pokemon characters on the panel will be used in your quilt. Mm -hmm. Okay, what do you think? Are we all done? <laughs> Is it time to show them the, the finished quilt? Yep. Okay. All right, we'll show you the finished quilt and how the kids are enjoying it. This is the finished quilt. It turned out awesome. What do you think? I love it. You love it? Awesome. I'm glad that you love it. I did put a little signature block on the bottom so you will always remember the year you, I made it for you. And I signed it. I put my initials on there. All right, so should we let your dad come and talk about how he quilted it? Oh, uh, yeah. Because he was a part of this, too. Mm -hmm. All right, Jake. What's up, buddy? Yeah, so we just threw a modern meander on it, um, a nice, simple, geometric design with all the square blocks. Um, I think it really lends nice with all the, the horizontal lines on it. Um, nice and simple. Went quick because we had to get it done um, mm -hmm. in time for Christmas. So I think we ended up... You just got it done, yeah. and we threw it on the frame, and then it was Christmas morning the next day. So I think we quilted it on Christmas Eve. Yep, and we, Mimi put the binding on, stayed up, and it was all ready for yeah. Christmas Day for you to open, right? No, I love the colors. I love the grays, and then with the pops of colors, it's awesome. Yeah, and we did put a flannel on the back, so mm -hmm. it was super soft for you to snuggle up. Yep. And Jace has been waiting for this quilt <laughs> since Christmas because we were like, we have to do a video on it before yeah, we... Yeah, we gave it to him for Christmas. Christmas and then we took it right away from them <laughs> because we had to So finally and... we got you here to do this video, right? right. On the weekend, so you uh, were able to do it. What do you think, buddy? Uh, you love it? You gonna give I it to your kids someday with all your Pokemon cards? Mm -hmm. oh, I'm sure they will love it. All right, so now it's time for the kids to play with it, right? It's all yours, buddy. <laughs> <laughs>